Catan. This immensely popular board game has sold over 32 million copies, won numerous Game of the Year awards, and been described as the board game of our times, and a genuine reason to invite friends over. Part of what makes Catan so popular is the board, made up of hexagonal tiles, which can be set up slightly differently every game. To keep your Catan games interesting, you're going to want to set up a fairly balanced board. In this video, I'm going to share some rules to follow to always set up a good board, and also show you how I made a balanced board generator that generates a random balanced board at the click of a button. There's a link in the description below to try out the balanced board generator for yourself, and all of the code will be available on my GitHub if you want to play around with it and maybe even try and implement your own rules. What do I mean by a balanced Catan board? A Catan board is made up of a number of resource tiles. There are four wood, wheat and sheep tiles, three brick and stone tiles, and one desert tile. A number is placed on each of these tiles, which correspond to the possible dice roll combinations when rolling two six-sided dice. The more dots there are on a tile, the more likely it is to come up, with sixes and eights being the most likely. The tiles are laid out like so, and players play settlements on the corners of the tiles. They get resources whenever the numbers next to their settlements are rolled. If you make a board that has any spots that are too good, they'll get snapped up by the starting player, who will then have a huge advantage for the rest of the game. So what are the rules to follow to avoid having any spots that are too good? Rule 1. No two brick tiles or stone tiles next to one another. Rule 2. No three sheep, wheat or wood tiles connected to each other. Rule 3. No resource tiles too close to their matching port. Rule 4. No two of the same number next to each other. Rule 5. No sixes or eights next to each other. Rule 6. No two of the same number on the same resource. Rule 7. No sixes or eights on the same resource. Follow these seven rules and you'll have the setup for a great game of Catan. But laying out the tiles randomly and swapping them until you get a board that matches these rules can take a long time, which is why I've made an auto board generator. To make this generator, I first had to set up a hexagonal grid in Python. I used this excellent guide by Red Blob Games on hexagonal coordinate systems, link in the description, and I decided to use a doubled coordinate system. With this grid set up to represent my tiles, I then programmed the logic to go through each tile and check against the seven rules to see if anything had been broken. But how does the program know where to first place the tiles before performing these checks? Here I used a complex programming technique called brute force. The program simply places all the tiles at random, checks to see whether any of the rules are broken, if they have been, just tries it again. It keeps doing this over and over until it finds an acceptable place for all the tiles. It then repeats this process to decide where to place all the numbers. It takes many, many attempts to create a successful board. In fact, I ran the code over a thousand times and it took an average of 128 attempts to get the correct tile placement and a further 453 attempts to get the correct number placement. Fortunately, computers are quick, so it takes less than a second to perform all of these attempts. So, is this program actually useful? Well, to test it out, I challenged my wife to a race. First, she would set up the board the way we usually do, placing the tiles at random and then swapping them until you get an acceptable layout. Then I would generate a board using my program and just lay the tiles out as told. Fastest time wins. It looks like the generator is both quicker and saves you important brain power better spent thinking about your tactics for the game. Thanks very much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please do subscribe to see the many more projects that I have planned. Also, as mentioned, there's a link in the description to find all the code I used in this project if you want to look at anything in more detail.